Hey, good morning. I actually got a lot to get through this morning, so bear with me. I'm going to try to stick to my notes, actually, because it's quite a bit that I feel we need to get through. And the main thing for today is, how do we feel when you know you're in a space where you're performing well, where you're doing great, when you are head and shoulders above the rest in whatever it is, over and above your station, over and above what you're supposed to be doing, you are performing great. You are leading the pack. Yet, you know, maybe praise does come. But like almost two minutes later, whether it be from the same source or from a different source, um, they almost crush or cancel out any form of praise by forms of negative feedback where you get swept with the exact same broom as everybody else. The non-performance, the mediocre guys. How does it make you feel? You know, how are, you, how are we supposed to feel about this? You know, and in this, this morning... God just brought it to me just before. And that's why my notes got so long. It reminded me of when Joseph was got into Potiphar's house. You know, and he was too IC there. He was in charge of everything. And the, all, all the, the bad thing that happened there with him is that Potiphar's wife, you know, wanted to sleep with him. She, she said, come and sleep with me. And she kept pressuring him. And he said, no. He said, listen. I'm too I see over here. Everything is under my command. The only thing the the Potiphar kept from me was you, because you're his wife, and I'm not about, about I'm not about to kill off that trust. But she kept tr pressuring him. She tried him, and she grabbed him, and when he and then he ran away. And in that, a piece of his cloak tore off, I, I believe. And she waited till Potiphar got home, and she's like, and he was like, "What happened?" Because he obviously heard a story, and then she tell this fake story to him and had Joseph thrown into jail. He didn't deserve that. Where he was just doing the right thing all along and then this sort of thing happens. So, you know, how do we keep going in this sort of circumstances when when these sort of things happen to us? What do we do? And the, the two first verses that, that popped into my mind, one was Isaiah 41.10, which is, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is with me. Even through this trial and tribulation that we are facing, God is with you, my friend. He's there with you. Just be reminded that He upholds you. He lets you keep going, man. And then also, uh, something that completely shifts that into the other terms of, of, of a different area, so to speak, is in Matthew 6, verse 4, where it says, your charitable, uh, that your charitable deed may be in secret. And your father who sees in the secret will himself reward you openly. So you keep going. You just keep going. You keep tackling that. And even if it, that's where you, if you keep improving in secret, if that's where you have been doing it, you keep doing it there. You keep going. You keep doing it. You know? And your father who sees it, God sees what we are doing. He sees how we are being faithful stewards with what he has given us. And he will reward us there, you know? And how do we glorify God in our response with these things? You know, even in when, when Joseph was in prison, he kept going. You know, I, I can't, couldn't even imagine this morning how Joseph must have felt. I mean, this guy got thrown in prison. All we get done is swept with the same broom and go, listen, the lot of you, you folks aren't performing well. You need to pick it up. When you are picking it up, when you when you have been sort of things, you know. So how much he have felt for being too icy and I get thrown in prison over here. You keep going. Joseph Black interpreted people's dreams while he was in the prison over there, you know. Um, and... It reminded me in that section, Colossians 3, verse 23 says, And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not to men. So we need to perform as if we are doing our job, we're doing our increase, we're doing our training, we're increasing our performance, we need to do it as, we, as if we are doing it for the Lord, you know. And we remember that God has given us the abilities and skills, not to only perform our tasks, but also to grow through these circumstances, but mainly also to glorify Him, of course, you know. Um. God is not going to leave you in a place where you constantly need to face stuff like this as well. But we, rem but remembering our recent messages, then then we got to move. We need to figure out: Are we stuck in a place? Is this the kind of place that um, where there is no hope anymore, or is the enemy just trying to break you once again? And once we figure that out, then we act accordingly, you know. And also, lot be larger than the response. Is this truly for me? Remembering when people say. 
if the shoe fits, wear it. So if the shoe doesn't fit, if you are not a regular performer, if that broom that's coming to sweep, if you're not, if you're not really part of that, you know that. Whether the other people know it or not, is no, doesn't matter. Do you know that? If it's not for you, then don't take it. Don't take it. Put the shoes on. You know, if the shoe fits, wear it. Don't then. You know, so my first thoughts often have been, oh, once again, another space has been created where performance isn't celebrated, where performance isn't rewarded. So, so why do it at all? Because we need to do it as if we are doing it for the Lord, you know. Um, but in this moment, in a moment of this thing, I dove into worship. But I, gra- I ran. It. Oh, I was about to go to bed, and I just said, "No, I'm not feeling liquor. This isn't sitting right with me. It's not liquor." I dove into worship. I, I cried out to God, man. I complained, like, "Ah, oh, man." I'm sitting here feeling stupid that I complain now. But in the complaining, you know, it was such a good thing to do the fact that I went there. Because God reminded me that I made a decision to be a faithful steward. That I made the decision to, whether or not I'm rewarded, whether or not there's, yay, whatever, whoop, whoop de doos Whether it's this up and downing sort of thing that keeps on happening. I made a decision to be a faithful steward and apply all my things. To get better in all aspects. To bloom where he has placed me. Until he moves me. I made that decision, not for the reward. I made the decision for him. I made a decision to glorify him. That's what I did that for. And in that, he will reward, he will reward me. As, and, 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 you know, this also helps us to, to grow nearer to God. You know, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 remembers, reminds us that in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So still, in these moments, we need to give God thanks. I need to thank God for this challenge. And I have started, but that's what we do. We thank God for these challenges that come across. And then at the end, you know, <clears throat> when 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 Joseph laid out the, interpreted these guys' dreams, where they said, you know, oh no, when we get out, we'll, we're going to tell you about. Well, we're going to tell Pharaoh about you. Oh, because man, and what happened? They actually ended up forgetting. But then in the end, Pharaoh came out. He had dreams. He had crazy dreams that nobody could interpret what had happened. The one dream was about the seven fat cows and the seven thin cows. And I think the seven thin cows ate the fat cows and they remained thin. And this spoke about years, years of overflow and years of drought. And, you know, the the interesting thing is that in this time when nobody could interpret it, that they, the the guys remember, it's like, hey, there was this guy, there's this guy that was in prison over here. Maybe he could help. And then they remember Joseph. And Joseph brought him out. He interpreted the dream. And look at this, what I love here. It says in Genesis 40, verse 37 says, Can we find anyone else like this man, so obviously filled with the Spirit of God? And then in verse 41, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge in the, of the entire land of Egypt. Are you guys seeing what's happening over here? I got so excited when I got to this part. Because God had Joseph's number. God knew exactly where Joseph was. God knew what he was going through. God knew he took, wherever the fact that he was too icy over in Potiphar's house, God had to take him out of there. Yes. Did he go to prison? Yes. Did he deserve it? No. No, he didn't deserve to, to go through that. But in that, he made sure that he still stayed a faithful steward. And God had his number. God remembered where he was. Maybe there was something particularly he had to go learn in that prison over there. Something that needed to shape still. Something that needed to grow still. And man, and then God remembered where he was. But now he's no longer just the two I see over Potiphar, uh, in Potiphar's. He's now the ruler of Egypt. God bro- elevated him so much more after that. Man, I'm telling you, you need to keep going, my friend. You need to keep praising God. And you need to keep putting in the effort. You work your craft to the best of your ability. God sees you always. He will always see you. He will reward you greater than what you have ever imagined. You run your race with all you've got.